Hi everyone and welcome to this broadcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I welcome you uh, wherever you are today. You are welcome to this broadcast and I'm convinced that this will help you, it will sustain you, it will bless you, it will encourage you. I uh, trust the Lord that you had a great day, that you are having a great week today. And um, I'm excited that I can be here again in your uh, living room, in your car, at work, wherever you are, I can be in your space to share the, uh, the word of God with you, to share words of encouragement. Today's word will be, uh, uh, it's, an exciting, it's an exciting time to, to be alive because today's word will encourage you. It will empower you. And I want to start a brand new series on domestic violence. It is important to talk about domestic violence, especially in the days that we are living in. Uh, I'm excited to share this because I, I'm excited not because of all the domestic violence that are happening around the globe, but I'm excited that I have the privilege to share this with you to help enlighten you, to bring attention to this subject, and to also help struggling families, help families that are struggling right now, that are suffering from a domestic violence. So as we enter this series, it's a four-part series, and um, I, I wanted to make it six. It uh, all depends on your response, on your re reaction. If you need more of this type of series, so let me know so I can um, dive deeper into this uh, so you can, you can learn more and can help you and your family and your friends and, 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 and your, your loved ones. So today I'm excited I, I'm in that position to help you. Today is all about helping you because I know that domestic violence is terrorizing families in America and around the globe. So as a faith-based counselor, you know, I've learned a lot about um, domestic violence. As a therapist, I've dealt with domestic violence. I remember one of my, uh, uh, one of the cases I had to uh, do, um, uh, I was giving a file and uh, 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 a briefing on, on that particular individual. And um, I was told, hey, there's domestic violence in that family, go and talk to them. And oh, by the way, that man just killed somebody. So you have to go into a family like that where you know that it's danger. There are so many danger here in, the, in households in America from the uh, poor until the rich. You will be amazed in, the, in Christian household, in non-Christian household, it doesn't matter. It affects everybody. So, and if we don't deal with domestic violence the right way, then it will bring destruction because that's the ultimate goal of domestic violence. And if you are dealing with domestic violence these days, then this is for you. Then you need to Listen to this, it is important. If you know someone that is dealing with domestic violence, then you need to call them right now and say, tune in here at Dr. Daniel uh, Domini uh, on, on Facebook or on YouTube. If you know anybody who's dealing with, with this, 
this series is for them. So it's a four-part series on domestic violence. Well, domestic violence, you can't talk about domestic violence if you don't talk about abuse. So we want, I want to cover all this uh, area. So please join me as we shed some light on domestic violence. This violence that is uh, uh, terrorizing the families in the United States of America and all over the world. So please uh, join me as we pray today before we enter into this. Dear Heavenly God and Father, thank you for this day. Thank you that we can uh, bring new insight and solution as families are struggling, as families are, are being destroyed, being tear apart uh, as a result of domestic violence. Father, give wisdom and knowledge to enlighten your people, to enlighten each and every one of these people that are listening right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, I want to share with you from my book. I thought it was just a great opportunity to use one of the chapter of my book to share. Uh, my new book here, um, Conquering the Spirit of Jezebel, and in one of the chapter, I, I dedicate that to um, control, manipulation, and, and domestic violence. You see, um, in my book, it says, it talks about the conquering of the spirit of Jezebel. So you cannot talk about the spirit of Jezebel if you don't talk about and, and, and don't mention violence and don't mention, mention domestic violence and abuse and control and manipulation so and seduction, those are all part of uh, the Jezebel spirit. So I dedicated a, a, a chapter on uh, abuse, spiritual, physical abuse and I think it will be very, very helpful. So we will work with my book today. And I want to encourage you, get yourself a copy. Go to Amazon.com and you can get a copy in Kindle, in Kindle version, uh, or you can get uh, this uh, printed version. So make sure that you get yourself a copy. And I believe that this will empower you. It will bless you. And bless somebody with the with a copy as well. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, one of my chapter, uh, and I think it's chapter five. Yes, yeah, chapter five. It said the title of chapter five is it said, "How long? Stop controlling me and mine." Oh God, this is a powerful chapter because. It will help you today, those of you that are dealing with uh, domestic violence. Why is it important to talk about domestic violence? Because it's relevant. Why is it important to talk about domestic violence? Because it is relevant. Because right now, domestic violence is tearing up, apart families, it's destroying families. So... We need to focus on that. We need to talk about that. And what is violence? What is domestic violence? Why domestic violence? You know, it is, it is important to talk about it. Why do we have to talk about it? Why is it so important? And what, it is, what, what, what is it exactly? Why is it important? So today we have the opportunity to, to dive into that. Before we dive into it, uh, now uh, I want to encourage everybody to vote. Please, if there's a time where we need to vote, is now. We all need to go to the poll. We all need to uh, make sure that we mail in our ballots. Make sure that you vote. Take the time to vote. It is important, especially as, as Christians, we 
we all, most of the time, a lot of Christians would say, let's pray and God will do the work. No, we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility as a United States citizen to vote. You have the uh, 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 ability. We have the opportunity as well to vote. So don't stay home. Vote. If you can go to the poll, go. If you can go, you can mail in your ballot. Do not uh, let this opportunity uh, pass you by. It is important. It is for our country that we all love. It's for our economy that we all love. So please go out and vote. And I'll be keeping on encouraging you to vote. Praise God. So let's let's dive into this uh, series. Violence. There, there is so much going on. Today, what I want to do today to set a stage, I don't want to go into all the statistics today, which I will in the coming weeks. But today, I just want to give you an introduction. I just want to go into this. What is domestic violence? What is exactly domestic violence? The domestic violence is violence that is committed by someone. So domestic violence is violence that is committed by someone. So someone did it. There is always someone who committed a violent act. So it is an act that someone committed. So someone did it. All right? And that person who committed that violence, they always have a victim. Uh, today, where are you today? And who are you? Are you the person that commits the violence? Or are you the victim? Which side on you are, are you today? It's important to know where you are. If we will talk about domestic violence, and, and let me make something clear, this is a serious topic. It is not, we're not joking about this. This is very serious. So therefore, if we will start shedding light on this subject, then I want to ask you a personal question. Which one of these two parties are you? Are you the abuser that is committing the violence or are you on the receiving end? Are you the victim? You have to know that so that you can get the help you need. Because right now in so many households right here in America and around the globe, so many households, there is an abuser. There is one that is committing this uh, abusive act. There's one that's committing all these violent acts. There is one. So maybe you are that person. Maybe you are that person that's committing. And I'm gonna, I want to help you too because you need help. You need help. Obviously, you don't know and you don't understand that what you're doing is a violence act. That what you're doing, that you are destroying. And there are several reasons why you're doing what you do. I'm talking to the abuser right now. There are, so, there are several reasons, and I will tell you why you are doing what you're doing right now. You know, there are several reasons. I want to go into that. But there are also the one on the receiving end, the a victim, and there is a reason why you are the victim too. There is a reason why you are still being abused and being uh, terrorized by your spouse, by your loved one, by a friend, by a close relative. There is a reason why you are being abused. There is a reason why you are being tear apart. There is a reason why you are being destroyed. I will help you with this. So hang in there. Praise God. 
It's important that we know how domestic violence is happening. We heard the word domestic. That means it's a there's a close knit circle. And this circle can be your partners. People can be abused by their partners. All right? Their partners, their immediate family, family member, a relative, and friends. So domestic violence happen in this circle. And you'll be amazed. You might be in a household and domestic violence happening and you don't even know. You know, uh, and, and there are several forms of domestic violence that I want to cover. One of them is uh, as the most uh, prevalent one, physical abuse. People are being abused physically. And God, every day, every day, Every day, people are being abused, physically, sexually. I will cover all this area. People are being abused emotionally. People are being abused psychologically. My God. And sometimes, all these other forms of abuse are worse than physical abuse. People are being abused spiritually. They are being controlled and manipulated. People are being abused in, in so many forms. And I believe that by bringing this to your attention, by sharing this with you, somebody will receive the help that they need. Let's go to the Word of God. What's the Word of God saying about abuse? Colossians chapter 3, verse 19. It said, Husbands, love your wives. Do not be harsh to them. Uh, let me say it again. Husband, love your wives. Be not harsh to them. Praise God. Listen, folks. It is important if we will talk about abuse today, that there are so many things, as I said, I want to go read from my book and, 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 and go to chapter 5 on my book, in my book. And I think that this is so relevant today as it will help you. Chapter 5. Okay, here we go. So, physical abuse is something that's happening today, meaning that one is harming the other physically. It can be the wife, the husband, let me start with the husband. The husband is harming their partner physically. The husband is harming the, uh, the children physically. They, it's not just spanking what they do, but they beating up their children with anger, beating up their wives. And uh, it can be also the wife that is beating up the husband. And sometimes we just focus on the fact that the man is abusing the wife, but when the wife abuse the man, then we think it's okay because he's teaching him a lesson. She is, because she is teaching him a lesson and because she is brave, because she is a strong woman and she can beat him up. It's okay. When she's beating up the, the children and and, and tearing, th tearing things apart, it's okay. It's not okay. Physical abuse is destructive. I always say something. If you have, if you with somebody and you feel the need 
to beat your wife, then this is what you have to understand. This is what you have to understand. I'm going to be I'm going to be specific right now. I'm talking to husbands. I'm talking to men. I'm talking to 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 men. If you are a man, you have to understand that when your partner, your whether it's your wife or your girlfriend or your significant other, when they were little, their parents took care of that already. Their parents spent them enough. So you don't have the right to lay your hands on your partner. You don't have the right as a man because you are physically stronger than your spouse, than your wife or your significant other. You don't have the right to lay your hands on them. This is what the scripture said. Listen, listen. He said, husband, love your wives and do not treat them harshly. Don't do that because this is the first that we, we, we will continue working with. Psalm 11 and verse 5. Listen what it said. The Lord tests the righteous, but his soul hates wickedness and the one who loves violence. So his soul, the souls of the Lord, oh my God, he said he, he hates wickedness and he hates those who love violence. Let me tell you something. If you take it upon you to beat up your wife, you are a coward. You are weak. You have a problem mentally and psychologically. You have a problem because you don't understand the value of your wife. You don't understand how beautiful your wife is. You don't understand the beauty that lies within your wife. You don't understand that. You don't understand something. Something is not right up there because look at you. I'm talking to you, abuser. Look at you and now look at your spouse. Look at her. Do you think, do you think that she was designed for you to beat? Do you think that she was designed for you to lift up your hands or to raise your hands or to punch her? Does she look like a punch back to you? What does she look like to you? If you couldn't do that, if you couldn't beat her up, listen up, listen, listen, listen up, man. If you couldn't beat her up at, uh, on your first date, then you can't beat her up in any other days. So why, why, why you didn't beat her up on your first date? You go on a date, girl, come on, let's go to you. You look fine. Oh, baby, you look fine. And now when we, let's go to a date. And now you're on a date. Now beat her up right there. Why you don't do that? You try to get her in the pants. That's all we want to do, all the pennies. You try to get to know her. You, because you, 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 you think you love her. And some of you are lying, though. You, you just met her. How you know you love her? You don't. No, you don't. You know, it take time. Love is endless. So how can you say that you love somebody and then turn and beat up that person? For men that beats their wife, they have an issue. And I have an issue with that because it's the reason why I'm so passionate is not only because I'm a, a, a therapist, but it's because it's personal to me. I've seen that firsthand. I was, listen up, everybody, come on, come on in. Thank you guys for joining right now. I see you, thank you, thank you so much. Hang in there, call somebody, this is hot topic. I, I was only four or five years old. How old was I? Four and five years old. Right now, I'm four, uh, <clears throat> right now, old now. You understand? But I was only four uh, 
or five years old. And after this decade, I remember a neighbor of mine. I'm, I'm a twin, all right? So the, why, the reason why I remember this, because I know it was around between four and five o'clock in the afternoon. Every, between that time frame, between four and five p.m., my brother and I would go to the window and just wait because we know that my neighbor would come home. So as soon as we get to the window, we would hear his motorcycle coming home. So the next thing that we will hear is a beating of a beating. This man was a abuser and he would come home. This, is, this story is also in my book. He would come home and beat up his daughters he, every single day. And mind you, we were only four or five, and I still remember this. It was that bad. This man would beat them up, and I feel sorry for them, even though his daughters were a little older than us, my brother and I, but his son was our age. So the daughters, every day he would come from work and he would beat them. And, 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 and not only them, but also his wife. He was a madman, full of a hatred and violence. So he would do that on a consistent base every day. This man, let me give him a name. Let me call him, I don't want to call him John because usually we call it every use every, I don't even want to give him a name, violent man. This madman, this madman did that for years. And later on we grew up, we moved and uh, we haven't, I haven't seen the, the, the these girls uh, for a while, I haven't seen the, the, even the, the son for a while. So and after we met, and uh, after years, decades later, I, I saw this guy, the son, and I asked him, "Hey, how's it going? How's it going with your family? How's it going with with your sisters? We I, I haven't seen you guys in a while." He said, "Well, I have uh, bad news." I'm like, "What happened?" He said, um, my, uh, my, my, my dad killed my mom and he is in prison right now. And all the, my sisters, they ran away. It was sad. So, but, but there's the thing I, I was, I, I empathize with him, but I wasn't surprised. I wasn't because there was abuse in the family. I wasn't surprised that he later on killed his wife. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. Where there is physical abuse, you can expect something worse to happen. Physical abuse, someone who is violent, if you're experiencing that, that somebody that your spouse is beating you on a consistent basis, you need to look for professional help. You need to say something, speak out. Don't take it, don't sit there and take it. Speak out, do something about it. Tell somebody, get out of that atmosphere. It's too toxic. It is not conducive for you to stay in. You need to look for a outlet. Look for a different avenue. And that, that, I, I, that, that doesn't mean that the relationship can be restored. It can be. But sometimes relationship like that need a pause. I encourage you to look for professional help. I encourage you to tell people who have the goal to say, go get out of this thing. 
who have the goal to say, you cannot stay in there. Don't go and tell some flaky, flaky people and some flaky, flaky friends that you have. Don't go around. Some people can't help you and they're going to tell you, oh, you need to hone on, you need to pray. Pray what? To who? And sometimes you kind of spiritualize everything. Let, let me talk to Christians, though. Christians, how you listening? Sometimes you spiritual pastor pray for me because I'm being, being beaten by my husband. I'm not praying for you. You need to get out. What, what, what do you want us to pray for you? What, what do we need to pray for? You need to look for help. That fool there needs somebody to get on his case. Because obviously, he doesn't understand that he needs to love his wife. So, or he needs to love his girlfriend. And by the way, wait, 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 wait. If, if, if you're a girlfriend and you're being beaten, why are you there? You're not even wife yet. And you're being beaten by some dude. Get out. Yes, 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 I said it. Get out. Run as fast as you can. Don't come here. And, I've seen you. I've seen you. Yeah, I'm talking to you that being beaten. I, I, I've seen you. Uh, I, I, want, I'm, I, I love my boyfriend. Love your boyfriend for what? He doesn't love you. Somebody that loves you. They don't beat you up. Somebody that loves you don't beat you. If they love you, they're not going to punch you. You need to get out. Oh, I'm here to, to, to tear things apart. Get out. Why are you still there and what are you doing there? You're not even married. If he gave you a ring, you are engaged and he's beating you. Oh, give him his ring and take off. Run as fast as you can. Get out. It's like the movie Get Out. You need to get out. Why are you still there? So, and, and, and understand, you need to understand something. Abuse, physical abuse is not something to joke with. It's not something to joke with. Because this, it, it, it's about power. He has the power to dominate, and he is using it wrong. So the power that he has, an abuser always used this power in a wrong way. He could have cha channeled this power to a different avenue that could be helpful uh, and beneficial to the family, but he's not doing that because why he is selfish. People who are abusing people are selfish and they are insecure. Because of his insecurity, he is beating you. He is so insecure that he doesn't give you space to breathe. Are you following me? He doesn't give you space to breathe. You can't breathe. You turn left, oh, why are you looking that? Why are you turning that? You sneeze, oh, why are you sneezing? You laugh, oh, you're laughing at him. Oh, you're looking for someone else? And, and because he's insecure, he has a problem. And that problem didn't start with you. The problem started way back when he was a little boy. So that little boy in him is what's speaking to you because he never grew up, still have the Peter Pan mentality. And that is what you're dealing with. You're dealing with a boy that pretend to be a man. Can I say something to you now? Now that I have your attention, you're dealing with a boy and that boy is coming out because that boy doesn't know how to handle his emotion he doesn't know how to control his feeling. He doesn't know how to be responsible because he's still a boy. And for those of you that want a bad dude, you want a handsome guy, tall, dark, and handsome, or tall, white, and handsome. Doesn't matter in what shape and form does he come, but you want him to be all that. And then you realize in the end that he is not all that. But that's what you want. You're attracted to that. But who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe. 
The reason why you attracted to that boy in a man's suit, maybe because you have the same problem. Have you, have you ever thought of that? That maybe the reason why you're attracted to all this relationship, this jacked up relationship, is because you yourself. Can I say something? It's because maybe you yourself never grew up. You're still that little child that act like a grown woman. And that's why on the flip side, as a woman, you're beating your husband. I've seen it. There was this guy, he would, uh, he was very talkative. He could talk. He was little in stature. And the wife was a little, you know, taller than him. And I guess he was more attracted to taller women since he was small. So Gus was a little insecure in himself. So, but because he wanted to prove something, prove who he was, he used to talk trash. He was a trash talker. But he was getting beaten for that by his wife on a regular basis. So sometimes you see his head literally covered. Man, what happened? You know what happened that his wife beat him up. So that too is wrong. Women, listen, all your ladies that think you can abuse your man physically, it's wrong. And some of you, you paid for it too. Because you realize you're stronger than him and you slap him and then they realize that he, and it's not what you thought. Because he come back full circle and he hit back. So I wanna, I wanna tell you something ladies. You cannot beat up your husband. It's abuse. It's not that you are brave. No, you are not brave. It's not because you show him how uh, powerful you are. No, it's the same way a man would beat up a woman. That's domestic violence. It's the same way when a woman beats up a man, even though we don't hear about it on a regular basis, and when we hear about it, we disregard it. When we hear about it, we think, okay, she is, uh, uh, oh my God, she is an example for all the women. No, she's not. She is an abuser. You cannot do that. Understand something. That little man, little boy, that is in a grown suit, grown up suit, is using all that he know. Because all what he knows is what he learned when he was a child. And that's what he's applying in his relationship today. And that's why he's beating you. Now listen up. That abuse that he is abusing you, physically, it trickled down to the children because the children can see that. Usually an abuser will do what they learned when they were a child. If they saw their daddy abuse their mother and it went on for years and nothing happened, then they will apply the same because they think it's okay. Because why they think they are a man? Why are you abusing? Because I'm the man. No, you're not a man, you're a boy. You're a coward to lay your hands on your wife. The wife, when you look at your, 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 your spouse, guys, I'm, I'm coming back to your guys. Listen up, guys. Abusers, listen up. If you look at the woman, and those of you that hasn't started yet, oh, I, I, I said it well, hasn't started yet because some of you are contemplating to, to slap the out of her. So you understand something here. 
you're not going to do that. Don't do it. All right? Don't do it. Because here's the, here's the problem now. I'm not even talking about the fact that you may be locked up. Or, I'm not even there yet. Don't do that. Because you've learned that while you was growing up and you saw the abuse and you think it's okay to do that with your wife. Look at, look at her. Look at your significant other. Look at her. There's no place on her face on her body to, for you to hit. Look at her. She is so beautiful. She is so wonderful. Even if she has a big mouth, I got it. Sometimes she will. You can expect that. Because who knows, maybe because you provoked her to a certain extent, that's why she has a big mouth. But if you don't treat her harshly, maybe you treat her harshly, you cornered her. And that's why maybe she was responding the way she's responding. But if you if you go back and maybe say what you want to say in a different way, maybe you can win her. If you stop being so harsh, if you stop being so judgmental, if you stop being so bossy. If you stop being so controlling, maybe she'll listen to you. Maybe you need to learn how to talk. Maybe you never learn how to. And that's why you think you can talk to her like you talk to your daughter or your son. No, you need to learn how to talk to her. That's emotional abuse we'll talk about that later but i want to stay here with a physical abuse because you speak a certain way to her that's why she has a big mouth and now that she has a big mouth you want to slap her and for some of you it doesn't take long to slap her who do you think you are my god i believe that way if the daddy was around he would beat you but Oh my God, if the daddy was alive, remember when the daddy was in his day, the daddy may come and, this is what she's thinking though, every time you beat her up. This is what's going through her mind every time you lay your hands on her. Like, my God, if my daddy was here, my daddy was back in his day, my daddy would do something to you. So quit doing that. Quit doing that. You are not a man if you are beating your wife. You're not a man, and you don't deserve her. How? How? Explain that to me. You don't deserve her. Y'all keep me talking. I'm not even going to the book. You don't deserve her. You're not a man. If you if you're gonna do that, you cannot do that. <clears throat> what is control? I'm reading from my book. The power to direct or to determine. Is the power to direct or to determine. So you have the power to direct where things is going in your family. And not only that, but you also have the power to determine how it should be. So if you are, can you imagine someone who has the power to uh, direct and the uh, power to determine the outcome can you imagine if they abuse it? That's what an abuser does. They have the power to direct where things go in their family, and they have also the power to determine. So the power that they have to direct, they're beating you up, and you can't do nothing. They're threatening you day and night. That, 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 that's how, how, how cruel they are. There is a sense of cruelty in the one that is, uh, that's abusing, the abuser. The violence that they use is because of insecurity, so they misusing the power. They abuse it, uh, the, the power. So, and then they determine the course by threatening you constantly. And if you look at their situation in your mind, psychologically it tells you that you can't go anywhere i'll find you wherever you go 
oh, you can, you know you can't leave me. This, this, this is the highest form of manipulation. My God, somebody got to deal with this. You got to deal with this. Listen up, folks. They'll threaten you all kind of form, and they'll, they'll let you know who, how powerful they are. They're not. Y'all making me sweating. Y'all sweating me. They're not, they're not so powerful. They have, oh, you don't know who I am. Oh, you can go to your mom. You can go to your mom. You know, you, you know you're not going anywhere. I almost call him a devil. You know, you're not going anywhere. You I, I, you know, you you want me for life. He's lying. He's lying. That's that that's called that's called that's called manipulation. He, he manipulation means you kind of direct them where you want them to go. You manipulate them. That's how they do it. You go around, they turn you because they have the power to determine the outcome. They have the power to determine the outcome. So they manipulating you, trying to give you the course of where to go. Saying, you know, you, you, you can go, but you, you need to be back here. Or I'm coming for you. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Don't stay in this mess. Some of you are so jacked up right now. He, how, how do you think he's so powerful? He is powerful because he has somebody to exercise his power. When he doesn't, then he's no longer powerful. He's using you to exercise his power, and he's abusing the power. I want to continue, but I have to close here. I have to stop. So, so this was just an introduction. I want to continue next week on this subject, uh, the, the, uh, domestic violence. Domestic violence, please. Understand something folks as I'm closing understand something this power is being misused and he has the power to direct but he has also the power to determine so you have to understand that whatever his plan is his plan of action he will always misuse that power to direct you, he will lead you in the wrong way, wrong path. Because, and the wrong path, when he begin to lead you, listen up, listen up, I want to give you this nuggets before I go. Uh, when he begin to lead you into this wrong path because he can direct, he's directing you into this wrong path, so you become a slave for him. You become weak, and you'll feel like, listen how you feel, you will feel like there's no way out because he, his determination is for him to get you to believe that he is your only option. The devil is a liar. He wants you to believe that he is your only option. You hear what I said? He wants you to believe, oh, abuser don't like this. Oh, I'm unmasking. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm removing all the, 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 the veil. The, uh, yeah, I'm exposing them. They, they want you to believe that they are the own, that they are your only option. But it's not so. So that's the outcome because they have the power to determine. So they determine, but their power is limited. Once you within their circle, then they have you. That they can exercise that power. They can misuse it. They can abuse it. All right? But once you're out of their circle, they can no longer exercise that power over you. They can no longer direct or determine the outcome of your life. Praise the Lord. Are you learning something? So now you need to step up now. If you are being abused, this is the takeaway. Make a phone call today. Call trusted people. Call abuse hotline. Call. Look for professional help. And sometimes, sometimes, it's the simple counseling that you need to go. And if he loves you, he will go. And you will see the change and the transformation in his life. And if he's not ready for counseling, and he is abusing you, he's not ready for you. Simple as that. So cut to the chase right now. If he's not ready to go to counseling to change his life, 
He's not ready for you. He doesn't deserve you. And so many of you today, you are in some jacked up relationship with someone that doesn't deserve you. Get out. That's my message. Thank you for listening. And I hope that this was a blessing to you. I want to encourage you to tune in at, at our next broadcast as I continue domestic violence. It's serious. Innocent lives are being destroyed. And you don't want to be a statistic. You don't want to be the next in line. And I don't want you to be the next in line. That's why I'm helping you. Get up and get out. Let us pray. I want to give you the opportunity to give your heart to the Lord, to ask the Lord to forgive you all your sins and come into your heart. And he will. He will. And he will lead you through life. And after I pray with you, I want to pray for each and every one of uh, you that are on the sound of my voice. And I believe with all of my heart that you will be empowered. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly God and Father, I am a sinner. I need a Savior. Forgive me all my sins. Cleanse me with your blood. Come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. Help me to serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for those that are in the sound of my voice. They heard your word. Somebody is being abused right now as I pray this prayer. Somebody is being killed right now. Father, families are being destroyed, being turned apart. Father, somebody needs you. I pray for strength. Father, for these victims to rise and do something. I pray, my God, touch families that are destroyed, the innocent children that are suffering. Lord, my God, I pray for a relief. I pray for a change. I pray for a touch. Father, do something, God. Father, help this woman to take the courage to step out and step out. Father, and look for help. Seek professional help. Lord, thank you for a turnaround in this situation. Thank you that somebody's life will be saved as a result of this prayer. That they won't take this abuse any longer. But they will walk away from it. Someone that loves you won't abuse you. Father, you said that you hate, oh God, you hate the wickedness and you hate the one that loves violence. That's what your word says. And now you said that we must love our wives and treat them with respect. Don't treat them harshly. Father, help us as man, strengthen the man to take their place in the household as men, not as boys. Those that are still boys, help them to transform into manhood and want to take their place as men in the family. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Thou bless us and give us a great day. Give us a great week in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. God bless you, folks. God bless your family. And tune in at our next broadcast. And I believe that you will be extremely blessed. I hope this was a blessing. Let me hear from you. Share this message and like my page at Dr. Daniel Domini on uh, Facebook and uh, subscribe on YouTube at Dr. Daniel Domini. God bless you. Stay safe. And I'll see you at our next broadcast. Blessings.